hello my loves welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is shahida and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back my loves thank you for tuning in i hope you're having a good day so far monday is all right i'm in a little bit of pain well i ain't gonna say i'm in too much pain but my back hurt a little bit my neck hurt a little bit because i was tossing and turning all night i could not sleep last night for the life of me the twins was just going crazy. I was having contractions all night. I've been having contractions all day. I, uh, I don't know. There's just a lot of shit what's going on today. Um, but y'all are here for story time. And I'm here to tell a story. It's, it's a pretty fucked up story, I would say. Because I'm not a fucked up individual, all right? I'm probably like the nicest person anybody would ever probably meet, to be honest. Like, I'm a Virgo. I stay to myself. I do my own shit. Y'all know this. This particular story time made me not be a nice person anymore. I don't fuck with a lot of people anymore. And I don't have friends like that anymore because of this story time that I'm about to get into with y'all right now. So, before I get into the video, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and get your popcorn. Go ahead and get your soda. Go ahead and get your candy bars and enjoy the story. So, this event took place exactly two years ago. February, around February 1st, February 2nd to be exact. And mind y'all, at this time of my life, I was doing a lot i was i was going out i was always drinking i was always smoking i was always going to clubs and stuff and probably hanging out with the wrong people but the people that i was hanging out with was more like well at this time it was family it was people that i consider my family like you know they were my in-laws my son's cousins but they were like family to me like we're all like family and um yeah I was hanging out with them you know you know when you know you know you know you're not supposed to be hanging out with certain people and at this time I was just young and I was being wild and free like I was just hanging with the wrong crowd, as the older people say. And it caught up to my ass. Like, and it started catching up to me faster than, you know, I was actually realizing at the time. And little small things would come up, come about that I never, you know, that just looked past, like those red flags. And I just would brush it off and be like, that ain't nothing. It just... It was just, you know, whatever. So, leading up to February 2nd, um, my lease was almost up at this apartment. I was already anticipating on moving. I really didn't know where I was going to move to or if I was going to stay at that particular area. I really loved my apartment. I really loved the area that I was in. It was quiet. Um, I really fucked with the neighborhood. Like, I, it was cool. That was, that was really my first apartment ever by myself like me and my son's first apartment by herself and I loved it that was the best time of my life to be honest like I learned a lot though during that time frame so I'm gonna say like a few weeks prior to this event um I had lost my job so that's when I was contemplating like am I gonna move am I gonna renew my lease what am I going to do? Because I don't have my job anymore. I'm trying to look for another job. And like everything was just going downhill. It was just, it was just not good. So um, then I ended up letting my cousin stay, you know, with me because she had uh, ended up getting evicted or something like that out of her apartment. And, you know, she had like two little kids and her husband or whatever. And so I'm like, well, you guys can come stay with me 
you know, until y'all are able to get back on y'all feet. She said she just needed to be there for a few days. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Y'all can help me out here. And, you know, I don't, I'm not working anymore right now. So y'all can chill here, sleep here, whatever, until y'all are good. So then a few days later passed, my sister had hit me up out the blue she was like you want to go to puerto rico i'm like bitch i just lost my job i didn't got no money i would love to go to puerto rico but i can't afford to go to puerto rico so she was like i got you do you want to go or not i'm like sure so she booked my i think she booked my plane ticket and i just needed to find a way to get there they had already had the airbnb and all that stuff so all of that stuff was set up. I just needed to find a way to get to the airport. And I had a car and everything like that. So that was no problem. <clears throat> but I didn't want to drive my car to the airport because, well, I really don't know why I didn't want to drive my car. So um, this was maybe, this was the day before my son's birthday um, when we went to Puerto Rico. And, you know, I was kind of bummed because I was going to be missing my baby's birthday. But this was also going to be the first time I'm going to i'm going on a trip you know stuff like that so i'm like hell yeah and i just treated my baby we had when i came back from puerto rico we got went to atlanta i took him to atlanta atlanta for the first time and we did a lot of stuff we went to Marco beach i might drop some pictures in here um we went to the aquarium we did some things out there so um the day that i left hold on let me go get my food and then I'll be able to really get into the story. All right, so boom, I'm back. Um, This story might be a little bit all over the place, but we gonna get to the end of it. Uh, my sides, my ribs, everything is hurting right now. And I don't know, no type of good position to be in. Y'all wanna see my food? It smells so good. This is my food, y'all. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, y'all know I love me some food. I love me some good old food, girl. These are burrito tacos, and they're my favorite. I get them from the food truck. Um, Fried tacos and my drink. Mm. All right, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, um y'all okay like i was saying i don't mess with nobody i don't fuck with nobody like that you know i stay to myself so the day that i left to go to puerto rico i think it was february 2nd 2022 this is two years later february 2nd 2022 i leave early well it's not too early but it was like maybe around noon ish to head to the airport new orleans airport damn i can't open my drink Oh, I can't start it. I can't open my drink. I had to go use a can opener. Hold on, let me taste this. Mm. It's good. It's my first time having one of these. Quarter my ice. All right. So. The day everything happened was the day that I left to go to Puerto Rico. So, this girl that I was cool with, she was my friend or whatever at the time. She was the one that took me to the airport. And I'm letting my cousin stay at my house while I'm going on vacation. Because nobody going to be at my house. I'm not going to be there. So I'm like, sure, you can stay there while I, while I'm gone. Why not? So I think a few days prior to that, though, we had got wind that somebody in my apartment complex was, knew her husband or whatever. And I don't know, they had some type of beef or something like that, but I knew nothing about it these people knew me i was staying there for almost a whole year 
they know me they know nobody be at my house but me and my son until recently they had started seeing them coming in and out of my house so the day that i left mm, the day that i left they was like i walked outside you know putting my bags on the truck and stuff and there's buku guys buku niggas outside with you know guns and shit like big pistols ars stuff like that and i'm not giving no fucks in the world all i knew was that i was getting ready to leave it was book it was a whole bunch of niggas out there with guns and stuff but i knew they wasn't there for me so was i scared fuck no i was gonna leave and deal with whatever consequences that was gonna happen when i got back home and the which i didn't think nothing was really gonna happen like you know i'm i believe in god i believe my ancestors protect me you know i believe in all of that stuff so um i'm headed to the airport about 30 minutes in i get a call from my ex-friend and she was like they shooting they shooting in, they shooting your apartment and blah 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 and in the background i hear all it used to be like buku gunshots like it was a war going on i'm like damn the niggas watched me leave out my house like they watched me pack my bag and put it in the car and everything watch me get in the truck watch me leave they waited till i left to to do that shit and you know that's nothing but god being on my side because they could have did that shit while i was there they could have did that shit while i was coming out they could have thought that i was you know on that type of time no baby i don't fuck with you i don't fuck with nobody like that so you don't fuck with me so yeah she called me i'm steadily hearing a gunshot she's scared and stuff or whatever whatever the case was at the time and i'm just like shit I don't know what you want me to do. I'm about to get on the plane. I'm not about to turn around just because that shit going on. Mm -mm. So, um, I think I got a few clips, y'all. I don't delete shit because motherfuckers will try to lie on you in a quick second. I don't delete a fuck thing. I'm going to show y'all the videos when I got back home. They had an eviction. Well, they didn't have an eviction notice on my door, but they did have a um. They had a a letter for court to me to go to a court, and you know I was at the time I was bummed because damn I wasn't even here when this shit happened and y'all putting me out like I had nothing to do with this. I was not here. I'm out of town and I can show y'all proof that I was not here. I didn't have nothing to do with this. So, you know, apartment complexes, they don't give a fuck about that shit. Your apartment gets shot up, this is your fault. <laughs> you wasn't supposed to have nobody here in the first place. And you are damn right. That is why nobody knows where the fuck I stay at now. Except for my siblings, my close, close, close kin, and people that I actually fuck with. After that incident, I learned my own lesson. I don't fuck with nobody like that. Like, no, you're not knowing. Nobody's knowing where I stay at, Okay. And I stay in a good ass neighborhood now. But let me tell y'all, well, I knew that guy was on my side because the day I got back, you know, from my trip, um, you know, I went inside, windows busted, bullet holes everywhere, shell casings everywhere. That was my first time ever being in any type of situation like that i've never been around guns i've never been around people that shoot that that be having beef going on like that i've never been around shit like that so this is all like new to me i was not scared at all people was like damn you're gonna go back to your home you know you're gonna go back to your apartment and sleep there i would be sleeping with one eye open no yes going home and i'm getting in the bed i'm tired i just came back from puerto rico bitch i'm tired okay so, you know, I get back home and I'm taking these videos. I'm I, I, I'm going to show y'all the videos, but I got videos, pictures, and stuff like that. The girl even recorded 
a video of herself trying to, you know, make a statement to the judge so they wouldn't evict me. But, girl, as soon as I got back from my Puerto Rico trip, they gave me 24-hour vacay notice. And I had to get the fuck. I had so much stuff that I had to hurry up and get out and move in 24 hours. Where the hell was I going to go? That was all I was thinking about was where I'm going. Where the hell am I going to go? I never talked about this. I have not talked about this since it happened. Like, I put all that shit behind me. Now, here's the tricker thing, though. This is why I don't fuck with nobody. So, the thing that got me was, after all of that stuff happened, you know, they was on the run. The boys was on the run. My cousins and them, they was on the run. You know, everybody trying to find a hiding spot. I'm in Puerto Rico, so I'm not really giving a fuck. I don't care what's going on back home. I'm going to deal with it when I get back home. So, um, I get back home, you know. Um, now staying at somebody's friend's, uh, one of my brother's house. And just trying to figure out life. Like, don't have no job. Only thing I got to my name is a car. And I was grateful for that. I still got my car. Y'all know after all of that stuff happened, my car was parked at my apartment. No bullet holes, no nothing. Haven't to my car. My baby still got it. She's still rocking with me. But, yeah, like, okay. So, um, shortly after that, I had got into an altercation or whatever with the same people that I lended my house to. Mind you, it didn't have no job or nothing like that. So, whatever money I had was for me, to, for gas, for food, for my son, all of that. So, the girl hit me up. They flew to another state or whatever. She hit me up and was asking me for some gas money or something like that. Like, bitch, y'all just got me put out of my apartment and you asking me for some gas money? Where they do that at? Like, you need to be helping me try to get back on my feet. And you just up, the shit happened, and you just up and left. You did, and you ain't barely much say nothing. Like, and you gonna come back to me and ask me for some gas money. How you gonna get into all this shit and then get me put at my house? I'm trying to be nice for you, somewhere for you and your family to stay at while I'm gone. And this shit happens, and then you gonna come back and turn around and ask me for some money. So I told her, like, no, I don't have it. Like, you know, I don't have it. And I'm talking to one of my ex-friends that I was telling y'all. The one that called me initially and was telling me that they were shooting. So I'm calling her, talking to her. And at the time, she talked to this dude that's cool with my cousin's husband. And, um, you know, I'm talking to her. Like, we was all friends. Like, me and my ex-friend, we was friends with my cousin and them. And so she was like, you know, we're just talking and running it. I was like, y'all know, I was like, you know, girl, uh, ask me if I had some money, you know. Like, I don't have nothing. You know, that's all I'm saying, basically. It's like, I don't have nothing. Y'all asking me, y'all trying to get every little piece of thing out of me. Like, I took my apartment, y'all trying to take my money. Like, shit, girl, damn, I ain't got nothing else for you. So, you know, I'm talking to my best friend. At the time, she my best friend. So I'm talking to her, like, you know, confiding in her. But the bitch-ass nigga that she was fucking with at the time was going back and telling my cousin's husband, like, we talking bad about her and shit like that. Like, no, I'm not talking bad about you. I'm just talking, like, I don't have nothing else to give. So they took all of that the wrong way, coming back at me. Oh, bitch, what's up? I heard you was talking shit and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, fuck are you talking about? Like, you asked me for money after getting me evicted out of my apartment. That's all I talked about. I didn't talk about shit else. What the hell was else was there for me to talk about? There was nothing for me to talk about you about. So, she got all her sisters involved. Like, bitch, we gonna find you. When we find you, you gonna blow your shit up. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to make sure your face is on the shirt. This and that. 
and when I catch you, it's up. They they even fought my friend. Like they fought her. They fought people coming at me like I'm hiding. Bitch, I'm not hiding. I'm trying to get my life back together. The fuck. I don't need. Everybody got their karma after this shit happened. I promise you that. And they probably still going through shit. Ain't got shit to do with me. I I moved like literally. Two weeks after that happened, I had moved in another apartment and was traveling, living my best life, bitch. And y'all still over here struggling. I don't give a fuck. But yeah, like, y'all got me fucked up. Like, all the way fucked up. So, um, uh, yeah, like, it was like, when I find you, when I catch you again, and blow your shit up. Better say bye to your son, blah blah blah. This, mind you, this is my son's actual blood. People, like, why would you want to do that to your people? Like, I don't know. People was funny. Um, ever since then, I had not seen them, talked to them. Um, I see one of them on social media every now and then. But I think like a few months ago, um, one of the sisters, the ones that was talking smack to me, that was telling me she was going to blow my shit up and all type of shit, she going to fight me and have my, have my face on the shirt and have all my people come and crying to my funeral and shit. Like, they said some really hateful stuff. And I'm like, damn. After I let your sister stay with me. Like, you had your own shit. Or, I don't know what the fuck they had going on at the time. Your sister was damn near on the streets. Or sleeping in a fucking car. And I let her stay in my shit. But, it's all good. I'm not tripping about it no more. I am fine. I am lovely. I'm in the house now. Life couldn't be no better, okay? <laughs> so, moral of the story, guys. Beware of who you fuck with. Because people really be jealous and envious of you on the low. On the down low, they really do. And, you know, I picked up some signs and shit days prior to this event happening. And I was already praying to God, like, you know, please remove the people that is not, you know, there for me intentionally. Don't have no, my best interest at heart. And all this shit just started going downhill. And I was like, damn, that shit happened so motherfucking fast. It happened so fast, y'all. Like, <clears throat> now I'll be selective about who I go out with. Like, if I go out with anybody, it's my sister. Um, It's somebody that I've... Like, I don't know. And it's like, they're cool people. Like, they wasn't my family, but I had married into the family. So, it was like, we was all cool. That's my cousins. That's that's fam. Like, that's fam. And to this day, I don't have no hard feelings towards them. Like, I don't have no hard feelings towards nobody. Y'all brought this shit upon yourself. I'm not hiding from nobody or nothing. If you want to find me, somebody know how to find me. <laughs> but I'm not tripping about nothing. So if I ever come out missing y'all, follow up behind this story. And y'all know who did it. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm not tripping about nothing because I don't I know I don't do nothing to nobody. So for them to want to fuck with me like that. But I definitely learned my lesson. I grew a lot from that shit. And I, I'm glad that I grew. That was something that I needed to go through. Because of what I was doing at the time. I was doing too much. And that was really God trying to tell me to slow the fuck down. And watch your surroundings. Beware who you're surrounded by. And... I mean, it had to take me getting evicted out of my apartment, my first ever apartment, you know, <clears throat> for me to realize that. But 
it got me to where I am today. So, I'm not really tripping. Mm -mm. But, I'm better, y'all. It's two years later. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, yeah. One of the sisters, um, uh, um, uh, TikToks came across my page. You know how they say to do the for you thing or whatever. And, you know, I looked at her page. She had nothing on it. She gonna hit me up on Instagram talking about, I see you looking on my page. Bitch, I ain't forget. This shit ain't over when I catch you. It's up. This is like a few months back. I'm like, I just left the message on open because, bitch, you're talking to yourself. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a damn, okay? Like, why are you messaging me? Go take care of your babies. Go take care of your son. Go get your life together. Like, this girl about 30 years old trying to beef with me. I'm only 25. Go find somebody else to play with or something. You shouldn't even be on that type of time. I'm not on that type of time. What the hell? <laughs> Like, people be so weird. Like, y'all, I got text messages. <laughs> I got pictures and videos and everything. So, I ain't gonna put the text messages and stuff up in here. That's, that's not really, you know, y'all concerned. Like, you know, the, but the text messages mostly consisted of the girls coming at me. I just let them talk. Bitch, I'm not about to respond to your foolishness. The fuck? I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I really did. Like, you mad because you heard that I was talking about you? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, that's what happened. I still don't know the, the beef behind the husband and the dude, you know, why they were beefing i just know that they were beefing and they shot my apartment up that's all i know but i'm dropping the videos up in here so y'all can see what i seen when i first got back home show y'all the news articles and stuff let me show y'all but that was my little story time that was my little rant for the day that was my little little side thing that I ain't never told nobody. I never talked about with nobody since it happened. Um, I never talk about it. Like, it's just a memory that I just threw away. Like, it was a lesson learned. But my battery is telling me that it's low. And my storage keeps telling me that it ain't no storage. So, this is about to be the end of my video. Stay tuned for the next story time, all right? And I will talk to you guys on the next video. Peace out.